Hi everyone, Tony Tonkin here. I've, uh, last week um, we discovered that Cathy Taylor is is leaving and uh, there are many of us in the community here who were kind of rejoicing on that very fact. I did a post on it in fact. But what I didn't know was an interview she did with the ABC radio uh, <coughs> earlier in the week. And when I when I what when I listened to this audio, I realised that there were substantial reasons as to why she left, and one of them has to be her Blinken incompetence. And if we take this vid, this audio that I'm about to play you, and we look at it in <coughs> its context, that is the overall experience of this woman running the child Department of Child Protection, we will realise the incompetence that actually sat there for so many years. Her inability to be able to respond to and answer uh, Anthony Bevan's uh, questions in relation to her was, to say the least, out, out well. It was, it was outstanding that she wasn't, after all these years, being able to offer any sort of reasonable response to any of the questions that he and his colleague asked her. So I'll play it to you. It's only a couple of minutes, so bear with me while you listen to this. You may not have heard it. And then um, we'll talk about it. Uh, either I'll interrupt it or we'll talk about it on the other side of this. So here she goes. ABC. Cathy Taylor, can you explain to us these terrible statistics. Almost 60 children who were removed from unsafe parents or reported to the authorities as being at risk have died in the past four years. What I can say to you in 2019, um, my recollection is there were approximately 81 deaths of children and young people in South Australia. And this is all in their annual report. I'm, this is not my data. This is their data, David. Yeah. In 2020, it was 73. And then my recollection is in see, 2021 after the COVID. I don't even know what... I, I, I don't know what she means by this is only her, her data. No, their data, not her data. Sorry, I was getting an echo. I don't know what I don't know what she means by that. Um, whose whose data was it? The fact is that she was minister during this period, and there were these extraordinary number of deaths of kids that were in care or at least known to the department. And here she is trying to make an excuse in the first instance by saying, "This is data's data. It doesn't matter where it comes from," you know. Um, and this is the indication that there were so many attempts of hunts, there were 60 odd deaths, and uh, she was responsible for them. But she's not going to take responsibility because apparently, according to her, it's somebody else's data. It went up slightly to 104, but they're finding that across the 17 years, they've definitely seen a decline. So generally, it's less than 100. So those figures, 81, 73, 104, 12 of those had had contact with your department. David, across three years, it's not just the 12 months before. But your department is coming into contact with a much higher percentage of children who die than for the general population. So, David, I think the really important question that we think, all have I to I just need on. to say that I think that's a wonderful statement that he makes, that in reality the number of kids in care have a greater possibility of dying than does anyone in the general population. That is a fabulous statistic, and we all need to note that because it does show the inadequacy that sits within the department. Now, I understand that there are so many people who are, uh, or so many kids that are at risk in that category. I get that. But in the general population, uh, there are heaps and heaps of kids that, are, I guess, are still at risk, uh, but it doesn't seem to happen uh, to the same extent as it does if they're in the care of the minister. And the reason why they're in the care of the minister is so that they do not get harmed because clearly there are shitty parents out there, obviously, who had harmed and damaged his kids. Not necessarily true, but that's the way they view it. But um, So I thought it was a really great question to ask and she, she didn't know how to answer it, basically. Why are one in three South Australian children being reported to the department every year and I think that's the real question rather than the question you just posed because I think it's incumbent on us as a community to ask 
why are we seeing so many reports raised with the department for children and young people? Why are we seeing, you know, such an over-representation of so, those living so in... So here we go. It is the community's fault that we're reporting, uh, the community's reporting doctors, nurses, social workers, psychologists, teachers, are all putting in these incredible number of reports and clearly if they weren't doing that if they weren't reporting them in the volume that they are there wouldn't have been an issue however we do need to remember that it was the government who insisted on making notification mandatory to certain professions so you've created this problem uh, so don't blame the community for the fact that it just simply exists socioeconomic disadvantaged areas why are Aboriginal children yeah. being reported at different rates? And I think that's actually the driver to this. If, if she doesn't know why Aboriginal, Indigenous and First Nations children are being reported, then where in the frickin' hell have you been for the last 100 years? Um, it's, it's beyond me that her answers demonstrate a complete lack of knowledge of economic, social impacts that government decisions have had on the community and the lack of um, effort placed into pr providing services for communities so that they could address some of these, uh, these issues. It's just, it amazes me to think that a woman who has been at this job for so long has so little understanding as to the reasons why she could have had a conversation with David about why these issues are there, what they've attempted to do in order to rectify these issues. But oh no, in true Cathy Taylor fashion, she goes on the defensive and doesn't doesn't answer the questions because she's afraid she's either afraid to or she doesn't know the answers. And to think that she doesn't know the answers after all this time, I find is absolutely appalling. Being brought to the department's attention, and that child later dies. The mortality rate is much higher for those children, for the general population. Doesn't that point to a failure by the authority to care for those children? Not at all, David. Well, well what's the point in putting them in touch with the department if a higher proportion of people who come in contact with your department are dying than the general say... population? that her response, not at all, David, is dismissing an, a reasonable argument. You know, these kids have come in to care for, with you to care for them and you've failed to do so. Whose friggin' problem is that? Well, clearly it's not the departments where the kids are supposed to be cared for. It's the community. It's the notifications. It's, and she said not at all and just left it at that. Wasn't even prepared to discuss it with David in any form. Absolutely, absolutely atrocious and extremely, extremely sickening. And I don't know about you, but really maddening to think that this woman's been in charge of this department for so many years and government after government has allowed it to happen until now. And that points to a problem. Do you take any accountability personally and on behalf of your department for any of those deaths? Um, we participate in child death processes through coronials and other matters and quite appropriately we take accountability when there are findings that it could have either been prevented or that there are critical learnings. What I'm reflecting on, Stacey, is how do we stop blaming the Department for Child Protection staff and actually how do we as a community take greater responsibility for keeping children and young people safe? See, the whole thing is about blaming the community. This is, this is her thing. The department were never responsible for kids that died while in care or kids that they knew about who either died or became ill or, or whatever. They, there's just completely denial around any responsibility. So she says, well, there's all these inquests. We'll take responsibility once someone tells us that we should have been responsible. In the Chloe Valentine case, the, the, the coroner came out and said, you stuffed up in all of these areas and some of those people got promoted. How does that work? No one seems in this department to want to take responsibility. This woman's interview was atrocious. It is an absolute disgrace that 
this interview, um, that she behaved the way that she did in this interview. And if this has been a tenure for the whole time that she's been with the department, then you and I should have asked why wasn't she sacked earlier? And if this is the way the department thinks, Fiona Ward and the other people that, that are now running the department, basically, if this is the way they think about child protection, then we are stuffed. There is nothing we can do about it. If this is the mentality that permeates the child protection system in this state and across this country, then we're in bad shape. And this is the, the type of person that's been looking after the child protection system, uh, infiltrating her, her ideas, perpetuating some of this garbage about the community responsibility when they have taken no responsibility whatsoever for the way that they've treated kids. <coughs> I, I don't know how you think about all of this, but I think that was a revealing two minutes about this woman who, thank God, is going. So we'd like you to subscribe to us, get more of these videos. There'll be more to come. Uh, I'm hopeful that at some particular point uh, there will be a change and that you and I will see that change. But I'm not all that hopeful, I can tell you right now. Thanks, everybody, for being with me. Take care, look after yourselves, and more importantly, be safe.